It's a battle of the governments on this episode of Hot Knox. In this corner, weighing in at 6'6", 250 pounds, the one, the only, big government! In the opposing corner, coming in at 5'2", 125 pounds, an unlikely contender, let's give it up for small government. Sound a little mismatched? Well, it is. Odds are actually in the small guy's favor. Because you see, in the battle between current big government and small government models, small government is actually winning. 50 years ago, Singapore and Hong Kong were very poor Asian city-states without natural resources. Now their millions of citizens enjoy the highest living standards and lifespans on the planet, Singapore being number three and Hong Kong number four in terms of longevity. They didn't get there from a lot of government spending. In both countries, government spending is well under 20% of GDP. They got there by economic freedom, Hong Kong being number one and Singapore being number two out of the 159 countries ranked. France may pride itself on Bardot the Baguette and big government, oui oui, but its neighbor Switzerland actually boasts a higher GDP and life expectancy with 35% less government spending as a percentage of GDP. Switzerland even has a higher GDP per capita than the United States, and it's landlocked. France didn't become wealthy from its big government ways. Actually, France was rich before it instituted its big government welfare plan. C'est dommage. As you can see from this table, rising per capita incomes, economic growth, and low levels of unemployment are more often associated with smaller, not larger, government and more economic freedom. And many studies show that government spending as a percentage of GDP above 25% actually slows down economic growth and job creation. So it looks like it's a knockout for small government. We have a champion! So why aren't the big government contenders paying more attention to the little guys? Huh. That's a good question. See you on the next episode of Hotnomics, not your typical economics class.